Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking all about the const keyword in C++. A lot of people seem really confused by this, so hopefully this video will clear things up. So const is more or less what I like to call a bit of a fake keyword because it doesn't really do much in the scope of changes to the generated code. What it is is kind of like visibility for classes and structs. It's just a mechanism we get in order to kind of make our code look a little bit cleaner and enforce certain rules on developers working with our code. Const is basically sort of like a promise that you give in which you promise that something will be constant. That is, it's not going to change. However, it's just a promise and you can bypass that whole promise and you can break your promise just like you can in real life. Like when I promise to make like daily videos and then don't, yeah. But anyway, the point is that it's just, it's a promise you promise something to be constant and whether or not you keep that promise is kind of up to you. But again, it's a promise in the sense of you should be keeping that promise. And the reason that we want to keep constant pro kind of promises is because it can actually help simplify our code a lot. And uh, it has a lot of other benefits which we'll talk about in a minute. So let's just dive into some code so I can show you what I'm talking about. If I declare an integer just like this, I'll set it equal to five, I'm free to change that integer to whatever I like anyway down the road. However, if I declare this as a const int, I cannot change it as you can see here. So by writing const here, you've kind of done a few things. First of all, you've syntactically kind of specified that this a integer here is going to be a constant, I'm not going to modify it. This makes a lot of sense if you declare something like max age and set it equal to 90 or something like that. You don't really want this to be a variable because, well, it's not variable. You've defined a maximum age and you're never going to change that. That's just kind of a number that you need to keep around in your program. So this is probably the most simple example for how const can be used. It's simply a way to say that I'm declaring a variable and I'm not going to modify this variable. I don't really want it to be a variable variable, right? Because the term variable implies that it can change. Whereas const stands for constant, which means that you're basically declaring a constant instead of a variable, something that will not change. Now, there are several other uses for const, so let's talk about them. The first one applies with pointers. When you declare a pointer, so for now, all I'm going to do is create an integer. However, I'll create this integer on the heap so that we actually get a pointer. Because this is declared without const or anything, I can do two things here. I can dereference a and then set it equal to a value such as two. And then of course, if I print a, I'll get two and all is well. And then the other thing I can do is actually also reassign the actual pointer so that it points to something else. Like for example, this max age that I've got here. Now to bypass this whole const thing, I can cast this to a normal int pointer. N not something you should usually do. Remember how I said that you can kind of break the const promise? This is one of the ways. However, if you try and do it in this case, you can see we've declared max age as an actual constant. Chances are the compiler is actually gonna treat that as kind of a reader only constant. And if you try and dereference this and actually write to it, you'll probably get a crash. However, for this purpose, it will still work. If I hit F5 now, you'll see that I now get 90 printing because what we've actually done here is reassign the pointer. So we can do two things. We can change the contents of the pointer. So the contents at that memory address, but then we can also change which memory address we're kind of pointing towards. Now let's start adding const everywhere. So the first thing I can do is put const just at the front here. So it's just a const int pointer. What does that mean? That means that you cannot modify the contents of that pointer. So you can see here that I've created a pointer. However, when I, when I try and dereference that pointer and change the value of a, you can see that I can't do that. The value of a being the contents at that actual memory address. However, reading a of course is still fine. You can see I'm dereferencing it here and printing it and, and I get no errors. You can also note that I'm not getting any kind of error when I try and actually change a. So when I change the pointer a to point to something else, such as max h, that's not a problem. I just can't change the contents of that pointer. So the data at that memory address. The second way that I can use const is by putting it after this pointer sign like this. What this does is kind of the opposite. I can change the contents of the pointer, but I can't reassign the actual pointer itself to point to something else. Note that if you put const over here, right? So basically it's before the pointer, it's after the int, but it's before the pointer, this has the exact same functionality as if I would have written it like I did before, like that, right? Const int pointer or int const pointer, they mean the same thing. 
you've just you've moved const but the the key here is that it's before the pointer sign right it's before the asterisk whereas to make the actual pointer constant so that we can't reassign the pointer you need to put it after the asterisk before the variable name so make sure you remember that because sometimes you will see people with different kind of programming styles writing int const pointer but just know that it's the same as const int pointer the difference is when you do int pointer const that's the difference so this is not possible i can't set it equal to anything else like null pointer or anything i can't reassign act the actual a but i can change the contents of what that pointer is pointing towards and finally of course i can write const twice like this which means that i cannot change the contents of the pointer and i can't change the actual pointer itself to point to something else so that's kind of the second usage of const when when you're dealing with pointers you can be talking about the pointer itself or the contents of, of where the pointer is pointing towards. And where you put const here with your declaration, whether it's to the left or before the asterisk or after the asterisk, as you can see, it has a different meaning. Now, the last meaning of const that we're gonna talk about today is to do with classes and methods. So let's write a quick class. We will call it entity. We're going to give it two variables. We'll have my and mx. We're not gonna initialize these or anything, it's just an example. And I'm going to attempt to write getters and setters for this. Now, when I start writing my get x, I'll just make it return x. I'm actually gonna put const on the right side of the method name. So after, the, after any parameters that we might be taking, I'm going to write the word const. So this is kind of the third usage of if it comes kind of not really to do with a variable, but after a method name. This only works in a class, by the way. What this means is that this, this method is not going to modify any of the actual class. So you can see we cannot modify class member variables. If I try and do something like mx equals two, I'm not going to be able to do that, right? I've promised that this method is not going to modify the actual class. It's just kind of a read-only method. It's just gonna read data from the class potentially, but no modifying is gonna be taking place here. So it makes sense to write const with a getter. However, with a setter, of course, if I wanted to have a setter where I set my x value here, I'm going to have to write to x. So I can't declare this as const because obviously I need to write to the class. So this is as const and typically you would declare this with a const. Now, of course, if x was a pointer and you wanted it to be const all around, what you could do if we just make x a pointer, you could do something like const int pointer, const get x, const. So you can see we've literally got const written three times on that one line. C++ man how it rolls. So what this means is that we are returning a pointer that cannot be modified. The contents of the pointer cannot be modified. And this function, this method promises not to modify the actual entity class. So yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of restrictions we've put onto this method. Let's revert this back to not being a pointer. One thing I'll point out just quickly, haha, point out. But anyway, one thing I'll point out really quickly here is that by putting the pointer next to the type like I've done here, MX, actually becomes a pointer, but my is just still an integer. If you want everything to be a pointer on one line like this, you actually have to stick a pointer next to each variable. Just something I thought I'd mention, even though it's a bit off topic, because I'm sure people are gonna be a little bit confused by that potentially. So I'm reverting back to just having a normal getter. The question is why? Why would I want to declare this stuff as const? Like I get that, I get that it, it kind of promises not to touch things in this function. And maybe if someone else was extending that function, they would say, okay, cool. This is not meant to write to the class. However, does this actually enforce something? The answer is yes, it does. If we had our entity over here in our main class, let's just write an actual practical example. Potentially I create my entity and then I have a function which prints my entity and I want it to access my getter. So I'll do something like see out, we'll have, we'll pass in entity just like this for now, a dot get X. And we've got a pretty reasonable function here. <clears throat> now I want to be able to pass this by const reference because I don't want to copy the entity class. Again, we'll talk about copying and stuff in a future video, but basically I don't want to copy my entity class because that would potentially be, be slow. I mean, in this case, it's eight bytes, so it probably wouldn't be, but in general, I don't want to copy, I don't want to be copying all my objects because that will be slow, especially for something that's read only. So I want to be able to pass it by const reference. Now here's the thing. If I pass this by const reference, it means that this entity is const. So just like with pointers, if this was a pointer, I can modify kind of what it's pointing towards. So I can set E to null pointer and that's fine. 
but I cannot actually modify the contents of E. So by writing const reference like this, I have the exact same case. I cannot modify the entity. I can't reassign it to something else because remember, this doesn't work like it does with pointers. If you reassign this reference, you're actually changing this object, not some other object. There's no kind of separation between a pointer and the contents of the pointer because with references, you are the contents, right? That's all you can modify. There's no dereferencing. You are that entity, even though you're a reference. And so the big thing is I can't modify entity. So if I remove this const from this getter, suddenly I'm not allowed to call that get x function because this get x function does not guarantee that it's not going to touch the entity. It could be doing stuff like this. So how on earth would that work? I'm not modifying the entity directly. However, I'm calling a method that does modify the entity. That's not allowed. So what I have to do is mark this as, as const. And then what that means is that when I have my const entity, I can call any const functions. So because of that, you'll actually sometimes see two versions of a function. One which just returns x, for example, with no const and one that returns x with a const. And of course, in this case, it would be using the const version of the entity get x. Otherwise, it will be using the other one. It looks, looks a bit messy having two identical functions, basically, but that's, that's how it works. So because of that, remember to always, always mark your methods as const if they don't actually modify the class or if they're not supposed to modify the class, because otherwise you'll literally be stopping people from being able to use it if they have a const reference or something like that. Now, in some occasions, you do have something that is kind of const and you really want to mark the method as const, but for some reason, you just, you just need it to modify some kind of variable. So suppose that we maybe had, I don't know, a variable here, which we just needed to modify. Maybe it was something that's just like for debugging or like it doesn't really affect the program. Like we still want to mark the method as const, but we just need to touch this variable. Well, we can do that. There's a keyword in C++ called mutable. Mutable, of course, means that it's able to be changed. So if we make this var variable mutable, you can see that we are modifying it even though we're inside a const method, right? We can't modify it if it's not mutable, but if we mark it as mutable, there we go, we can modify it. So hopefully that's another question answered. What is mutable? That's what mutable is. It allows functions which are const or methods which are const to modify the variable. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button to let me know that you enjoyed this video. If you really like this video, you can help support this series on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. You'll get some pretty cool rewards such as being able to contribute to the planning of these episodes and talk about stuff and get these episodes early sometimes as well. Pretty cool stuff. And of course, you're helping to support the series. If you have any questions about constness or if you feel I haven't covered something and maybe I should in a future video, just leave a comment below. I'll try to answer to as many as I can. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.